on for Dominique in terms of the Navigator program and what they were able to accomplish? Uh, so about that data, would you guys release it after after today's deadline? Some aggregate numbers? Yeah. Um, yeah. And where would that be on? Just on the list website? Or? Yeah, we'll definitely make it available on our website and I can certainly share it with you all to publish wherever you like. So I have some mechanical budget questions. Uh, did you guys uh, provide devices? Uh, what were you? What were the navigators actually using to collect the move move forms? Did you guys provide them with tablets, or they provided their own? Or? Yeah, they had tablets, um, and some had left tablets. So okay, so some brought that. But that was part of your guys' budget, or that? Yeah, was they we were able to get those funds okay, from the cool. state, fortunately. And then did the state provide you with the? Uh, printed materials that you're handing out, or is that part of a separate budget so they just kind of the gave you as many of those as you needed or whatever? The state provided printed materials, but they were pretty neutral, um, and a lot of the feedback we got, we consistently get from the neighborhoods is, mm -hmm. unless there is a logo of a local community organization, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the same impact for residents. For sure. Or, not that it doesn't have the same impact, but I think it has more gravity yeah. if I see a local. Yeah. Um, logo. So the materials did not feature local logos. So we did um, spend some money to get some things printed in sure. addition. Yeah. Were there any <coughs> targeting techniques in terms of targeting certain age groups or income or races or neighborhoods? Any techniques that were particularly uh, worked particularly well for finding the people you wanted to find and getting them to respond? So the tricky thing about the way our grant is structured is we really put a lot of trust in the subgrantee organization to make decisions that make sense for their neighborhoods. And since we were working, you know, in 20 plus communities, the strategy really varied from community to community. Um, I think in our Spanish speaking neighborhoods, I think they were definitely the most successful. And I think it's largely because so much information that was out there was in English that just having an ally who could and would speak to you um, in Spanish went a long way. Um, I think in predominantly African American neighborhoods, it was it was next for a lot of different reasons. Uh, questions? <laughs> um, I guess when you approached this and you weren't sure what tools you were going to use, mm -hmm. did you have like some astronomical number in mind for budget that you're going to spend on technology, and then? Did you did you get it down to some other astronomically small number? There was no budget because we initially asked for X amount of dollars and we were awarded a much smaller amount of dollars. And so we made the decision that we, rather than eliminating any communities or any partners that were willing and excited to do this work, that some things had to give and, you know, that just wasn't something we were going to be able to pay for. So had these guys not stepped in, I don't know what we would have done. <laughs> Both the Wufu, Twilio, the, so Smart Chicago has a Wufu and a Twilio account. Um, if, if civic developers want to use our Twilio account to build civic apps, we have that as a resource. Um, and so all of this, including uh, the money we paid uh, Josh Kaloff to develop the tool, came from the Civic Works budget, uh, which was uh, part of the night grant. Can you just say again, how did you guys get on each other's radar? Was that like... Were you introduced or did uh, Smart Chicago has worked with LISC uh, for a number of years. Uh, we partnered with them to do the Smarter Communities. Uh, we have a lot of interaction with the uh, We Connect Chicago program, which is a program that connects all the uh, community, all the public computing centers. Um, Smart Chicago and LISC are actually partners in, the, in part of the city technology plan that establishes big benchmarks for Smarter Communities. And so we work together for a long time. How did you select the different neighborhoods for uh, projects? And the partners? Yes. Partner um, we asked who, who's interested in participating, essentially. Um, and not everyone volunteered, because in some instances, the group would say, well, we work with another partner that's going to seek this funding, and we don't want to step on toes. Um, so, But for the most part, everyone was in. So that number of enrolled people, mm -hmm. do you know individually who ended up getting enrolled? No, um, that data is locked in the state of Illinois' vault. <laughs> we hope we can get it someday, but we just we don't have details on this individual. It would be interesting to see if you could find any trends between like the way you approach people, where you approach them, where they live, and that you would actually be, end up getting converted, right? That would be great. As a kind of hindsight, looking back analysis. What, what did the like 
the development of the forms and the training? What did that look like? How much did it cost? How long did it take? Um, the forms, it was super basic what you saw, so I just did that. Um, and then the training, I mean, we all of the navigators received extensive training from the state. There are some of the most well-trained navigators in the nation, like two days of in-person training, online modules, on and on and on. So this piece was like a grain of sand compared to everything they had to learn and know to do the work. Um, so we just did, you know, probably a 20-minute session in the context of another navigator meeting. Pretty quick. Yeah, I also wanted to dig into the enrollment number a little bit. So surely more than 3,000 people in the Chicago area enrolled in Obamacare, right? Oh, yeah. Enrolled. Definitely um, citywide and definitely um, that's just who, of the, of the 27,000 we did outreach to, this is just, that's just the group that enrolled with our navigators. So our outreach may have affected people who then went home and enrolled themselves or went to another navigator. So we'll never know that. So navigators actually did sit down with people and work them through. Exactly. Website. Exactly. Sorry, that wasn't clear. Yeah. Uh, what were the education enrollment events uh, like? Uh, primarily, where were they held and did they yield uh, many enrollments? Um, so I probably could dig that out of the room. Um, but, um, but, um, in terms of location, it completely varied. I mean, like I said, it could be an alderman's meeting, a public library, a single mom support group, a food pantry. It was across the board. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I forgot the other part of your question. Oh, did, did you get many enrollments uh, as a result of the events? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. A precise number but I can tell you that often um, people didn't have the paperwork on them that they needed to enroll on the spot so you know you would get some percentage of people who would show up and come and see you again to do that but you would lose people that way too. Um, what if any role that having this data available to you had on the way you're running the process as you're going through? Did you have intermediate analysis where you said, you know, looking at what we see here, we should change our strategy in one way or another? Um, so we did change the strategy um, with regard to ha having some people focus on outreach or enrollment, as I mentioned. Um, but because so much of the enrollment activity happened at the end, there wasn't as much analysis as I would have liked. Like, had the enrollment's been a steady stream. I think we could have been more deliberate about some things and more thoughtful about some things, but it was like, you know, a trickle and then an onslaught. And it was just so much that we were just all trying to keep our heads above water, you know, in this final week. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the texting option, and I don't know about others have worked on texting related apps. It seems like a pretty low hit rate, only 300 posts. Um, FCC Life FCC Lifeline program, I believe this year switched over from handing out flip phones to handing out data phones. And I'm just wondering if possibly that's not only just paranoia, but also possibly also just general waning interest among low income communities for text based platforms. And I don't know if you or anybody wants to make a comment on that. Uh, linking to that, uh, if we don't have any more questions about the outreach, I can switch over to Josh who will have more information on that part.